A titration is a type of analysis that is used to find an unknown concentration of a solution. So let's talk a little bit in detail about how an acid-base titration will work. So an acid-base titration involves taking an acid, reacting it with a base, and that is going to produce water in the neutralization reaction and something else. So this could be any acid and base, but let's just make it concrete by choosing an acid and a base. So let's say we have hydrochloric acid as our acid and sodium hydroxide as our base. That will produce liquid water from the H plus and the OH minus, and we will be left with some NaCl as well, some dissolved salt. And now one of these starting solutions, either the acid or the base, you do not know the concentration of. Could be either one. I'm just going to pick one. Let's suppose the sodium hydroxide we do not know the concentration of. So we would like to know the molar concentration of the base. The other reactant, the hydrochloric acid, we do have to know the concentration of. So let's suppose we can get an accurate solution of hydrochloric acid that is exactly 0 0.10 moles per liter. This is called a standard. A standard is a solution that we know the concentration of precisely. If you do not know the concentration precisely, you can standardize something, which means find out the concentration precisely. And as a matter of fact, this experiment that we're drawing right here is really standardizing the sodium hydroxide. We are trying to find the concentration exactly. Once we know the precise concentration of sodium hydroxide, we could use that same solution as a sample in a separate titration if we wanted to. The other information we're going to have to know is the precise volume of the hydrochloric acid used and a precise volume of the sodium hydroxide used. And our goal is to react these things until the exact point when they are both used up equally. So in other words, we don't want one of them to turn into an excess reagent. We want, in a sense, both of them to be limiting reagents or equal reagents. And we're going to use an indicator in order to find out that point by telling us that our solution is neutral, that it's neither acidic or basic. All right, so I'm going to show you with some pictures and stuff how a titration really works. We're going to start with this piece of equipment called a burette. It's a graduated glass tube with a stopcock on the bottom, so you can control the fluid that exits the tube. And for our example, let's suppose this thing is filled with sodium hydroxide. Next, we're going to grab an Erlenmeyer flask and in our flask we have to put a precise amount of hydrochloric acid. It doesn't really matter what that amount is as long as we're very precise about it. And what better way to be precise with a volume than to pipette it. So let's say that we are going to fill our pipette first with hyd um, hydrochloric acid and we are going we have a 10 mil pipette or you can get pipettes in 25 mils or whatever an exact amount and we are going to let that into our Erlenmeyer flask so it's kinda gonna be a small puddle on the bottom but we know the amount exactly so we can say 10.0 mils of hydrochloric acid is in our flask now we're done with our pipette at least for now so we'll take our flask and put it underneath our burette and what we're going to do is we're going to let some of the sodium hydroxide flow out of the burette into the flask and when it does that it's going to react with the hydrochloric acid we have in the flask. Let me pause here for a minute for some terms. First of all whatever you have in your burette is called your titrant. So in our case we have sodium hydroxide in the burette and so sodium hydroxide is our titrant and we have HCl in our flask and whatever you have in your flask is called your sample and then we would say that this is a titration of and then you always have to say name your sample first so this is a titration of HCl with sodium hydroxide and not the other way around so that wording is very specific it's not a titration of sodium hydroxide it's a titration of HCl now, to be clear, I didn't have to put the sodium hydroxide in the burette. I could have done them the other way around. 
but I just chose this way. And now it's really our sample or whatever's going on in our flask that we're interested in at this point. So we have an acid in our sample and we're going to slowly let some base into it. We know that when the base drops into the flask it's going to react with the acid, it's going to form some water, it's going to neutralize. And the more base we add that'll keep happening until we come to a point that the HCl gets completely used up and then we're going to be adding base and it has nothing left to react with. But what we're looking for is that point exactly in the middle where there's equal amounts of acid and base. That's going to be called the equivalence point. Equal amounts of both our reactants. And now we want to be able to see that. So how are we going to be able to notice that we've reached the equivalence point? Well, since we're dealing with acids and bases, we could find some way to show ourselves that it has become neutral. And of course, we would do that with an indicator. So I would take a small bottle of indicator, drop one or two drops into my sample, and we want an indicator that's going to change color right around a pH of 7, right when this sample reaches neutral. So check your indicator chart. There's a couple that would work. For example, we could use bromothymol blue. And if you check for an acid, bromothymol blue turns yellow. So we can expect our sample to turn yellow at this point once we've dropped our indicator in. Now we can go ahead and open the stopcock on our burette and let some sodium hydroxide in. And so our sample that was yellow, we will see turning blue when a base drips into it because when bromothymol blue is in a base it turns blue but if we would shake the sample and stir it then that blue would disappear again because there's still enough acid there to react with all the base until we've added so much that there's no acid left and that's really the moment we're looking for. We want exactly that right amount of titrants to be added to the sample. So we actually are looking to get one drop, one last drop out of, your, out of our burette that all of a sudden turns our sample blue and we cannot swirl it away anymore. It's probably going to be a very light shade of blue, but the previous drop we added didn't do it we added one more drop of our sodium hydroxide and it turned it blue. Then we've, we know that we've reached that magic point. Now we don't call it the equivalence point when we're talking about what we observe. We call it the end point. Now the end point is empirical. It's something we can observe. The equivalence point was theoretical. It was in theory that point where there's equal amounts of acid and base. The success of a titration hinges on these two things being actually at the same point. The end point actually being the equivalence point. So hopefully they do occur at the same time. Okay, so we've used up some sodium hydroxide. Let's say the level is now down to here on our burette. Used to be up here. So we know that this amount, the difference between our initial and final volumes on our burette, is the amount of sodium hydroxide used. When we do a titration, we would actually repeat this process three times, and we would average those three volumes used. But then the average of those three, we can plug right in here in our equation, that's a volume of sodium hydroxide. Quick little note about the average of three. We actually need three uh, samples or three trials that are within 0 0.1 mils of each other. If they're further than that out, we're actually just going to ignore that data and we're going to try again. We'll do a fourth or a fifth sample. Once we have three consistent results, then we'll take the average and we'll use that as our volume of sodium hydroxide. So let's have a look at our balanced chemical equation. You'll now notice that we have HCl with a known concentration and a known amount, volume, and we have sodium hydroxide with an unknown concentration but a known volume.
Let's just, again, for the sake of our example, give ourselves a number and suppose that we used an average of 12.43 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to react with our 10 milliliters of HCl. Well, now you should be recognizing this as a stoichiometry problem because 0 0.010 liters of HCl, or 10 mils, and that HCl was 0 0.10 moles per liter. We have a mole ratio in our balanced chemical equation of 1 to 1. And we know that we used 0 0.01243 liters of sodium hydroxide. So if we do that math, we find out that the concentration of our sodium hydroxide is 0 0.080 zero moles per liter. And this should be pretty straightforward by now. You know how to, do, how to do stoichiometry. We know that stoichiometry has sort of three knowns and one unknown, and that was the case here. And we've met our goal of finding the unknown concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. So this is what a titration is. One comment about the titrant and the sample. It doesn't matter if we, or which one we would have chosen as our titrant and which we chose as our sample. I chose our unknown concentration to be as our titrant, but that is not always the case. Sometimes the unknown is as the sample. And if you think about which numbers you know and don't know, it doesn't matter. Either way, you're only going to have one unknown concentration and whether that belongs with a 10 mil pipetted sample or whether that belongs with some other number from the average of your burette readings really doesn't matter. The only thing that might matter is the color that your indicator turns. It's a lot easier to see to watch it turning a darker color than to watch it turning a lighter color. So a quick recap of what's going on here. We want in an acid-base titration an acid and a base in equivalent amounts. It's the indicator that's going to tell us what's equivalent. We will know two volumes and one concentration. And as our unknown, we have one concentration because the titration is always to find a concentration. And our basic method of doing that is stoichiometry. Titrations will always use stoichiometry. And at the end of the day, the work involved in calculating a titration is averaging three trials and then doing one stoichiometry calculation. So that's the big picture of how a titration works and how it's used to find an unknown concentration.